Okay, let's do the Q&A session. Left here, support CarPlay. Uh, we're, we're working on it uh, right now. Uh, Okay, so that's uh, something we've asked Aptera about multiple times over the past year or two about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay because it seems like uh, such a, a great idea. Um, you don't have to do any of the infotainment. Most people have phones and most people know how to use the apps on their phone pretty well. And most people's entertainment, you know, Spotify, uh, you know, YouTube Music, whatever, their own playlist, they're on their phone or their audiobooks, And then, you know, Google Maps navigation is like better than anything that any car manufacturer is going to make anyway. So navigation is just way better on a phone. Um, so it just makes sense not to reinvent the wheel. And so they always said that, you know, they were just going to have Bluetooth connectivity and they weren't really looking into Android um, Auto and Apple CarPlay. And um, I've always thought that was a mistake. And I think a lot of people agreed. And their answer here is um, Android yeah. Auto uh, and Aptera CarPlay. Uh, we're evaluating them uh, for use in our current uh, hardware package. Um, right. And those things are kind of being flushed out uh, as we speak. Our engineers are at least talking with Apple, I think. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, it, uh, it takes some of the burden off of our UI UX development to use these kind of systems because if you don't, then you have to develop your own navigation package. Uh, your own kind of music package. So in a lot of ways, these can kind of help speed our development. We've, we've really focused on the usability of the user interface to tell how the vehicle uses energy and tell how the vehicle creates energy and give you a lot of useful tools for that. Uh, but the other rote stuff like navigation um, and um, music and, and stuff like that. Why reinvent um, that? Yeah, we, we you know, Apple. Okay, so it seems like they're coming around to that. And we know that at least uh, the last time we looked at their UI, they were using these IMX uh, processors. Uh, they were using an IMX8 uh, ARM Cortex processor. And those things support Android Automotive. And we know that they kind of had an annulment with their uh, merger with uh, Android Andromeda interfaces. And they, they said in their SEC filing that they're going to go with a high quality external supplier, which uh, I was thinking maybe it was Android Automotive, and I think that still might be the case, but maybe it's something else. But I think uh, some lean um, operating system with the addition of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, uh, which is different than Android Automotive. So Android Auto is the, is the thing that you uh, run off of your phone. Android Automotive is a kind of a standalone OS, and you can, you can run Apple CarPlay or Android Auto off of Android Automotive. It's a little bit confusing. Um, if you look at this, you can build this without the Google built apps like uh, Maps and, and things like that. And if you look at, okay, hold on one second, sorry. Okay, here we go. Um, this, is, uh, this is the cost of it. So it's believed that the module required to power Apple Car Android on a car, but it doesn't cost more than a couple of bucks. And um, while there are licensing fees, we don't know what the licensing fee of Android Auto is. I assume it's very low, and, be, and I'm sure I'm guessing it's cheaper than Apple's. Apple's are about fifty dollars, and that's not a per vehicle fifty dollars. That's for a specific number of vehicles. So maybe it's fifty dollars for a thousand vehicles or a hundred vehicles or something like that. But it's quite cheap, and I think it just it just makes sense that they're going to move to um, using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So it's, I'm glad to hear that they're looking into that. And I hope that gets implemented because um, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is infinitely better than you know most of the infotainment systems that any of the major car manufacturers have made. Um, so um, it's just a good good thing. And Android do it very well, so we, we do see it as, as hopefully a shortcut. Laptera have tamper sensors and cameras for security slash theft. Uh, we we are actively talking about how to use the camera for. So I think this question is about Century One. And actually, I don't know well, who got to ask these questions. I never got an email or anything um, asking to submit questions. Maybe the Accelerator people uh, got an opportunity to ask questions for this. Um, if you're one of the Accelerator investors, let me know if you had an opportunity to submit questions for this. But anyways, they're asking about Sentry Mode. That's something I've asked multiple times, and I think a lot of people have asked for. I think it would be a, it's it's good for security, and I think it makes for great content because you know it looks so unique that people are going to gawk at it, 
And I think it'd be fun to see all the stares of people walking by in parking lots uh, staring at your Aptera. It's going to get a lot of attention, at least initially, until there are more of them around. Um, people are going to wonder what the heck it is. Um, and uh, they've always said it's kind of on the back burner and that it's something that they're aware of. Uh, security system, uh, kind of a century uh, mode system, uh, but, but it's very low on our priority list. So right. it's not something that we're devoting a lot of time to. Uh, we don't have a lot of other sensors uh, in the vehicle, like brake sensors and stuff, but there are accelerometers where we could tell if somebody right. uh, was getting in the vehicle um, you know, after it's meant to be locked. I think the hardware hooks are there. I think it's just a matter of um, right mouse click, add software module. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell the engineers that. No. Make their head yeah, so I mean, I think they're giving basically the same um, answer, which is they're aware of it, they kind, they want to implement it, but it's low on the priority list. Probably not going to be at launch edition, but maybe later on it'll be added. Thanks, <laughs> uh, Will the charging software allow us to limit charging to 80%? Um, yes, but the really cool thing about the Aptera is most other electric vehicles, uh, and we've seen this in other industries, especially kind of the commercial industry, uh, you have to you have, you have to charge them <laughs> or you, you brick the batteries. Uh, you know, if you don't, um, you get the vehicle to a charger. But with Aptera, its solar charger is always trickle charging the battery. So hopefully your solar right. is always keeping your battery topped up and it'll have a, a great uh, Never long useful life. Never yeah. That's right. Okay, so I think, um, so they answered yes to the question that uh, you can limit charging to 80%. And hopefully that also means you can limit charging to 80% even when it's out in the sun that like it'll just open the circuit and just let the um uh let the solar energy just kind of dissipate and not charge the battery because the the person that asked this question obviously is asking can you limit to 80 percent to try to uh increase battery longevity because um lithium ion batteries do not like to be held at either a hundred percent or you know they don't want to be at a high state of charge or a low state of charge they like to be kind of in the middle um so limiting to 80% increases battery longevity. And, and that, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what the person who's asking the question was asking about. Um, and they kind of went off on a tangent about the solar charging, which, you know, I understand that's, uh, they want to push that feature. But um, the, the question is, yes, you can limit to 80%, which is good. And, and I'm, I'm hoping and I'm guessing that means that even when it's solar charging, you can limit it to 80%. Because, I mean, personally, that's what I would do the whole time as well. Um, um, will I mean, Aptera provide information parts? Unless you were going on a long trip, obviously. Tools necessary for owners to replace faulty cells in the battery pack. Uh, we do have a system to give you lots of information on right. how the battery is performing over time, its state of health, how well balanced it is. Uh, but the battery pack will not be a serviceable item. Yeah, I don't know any EV out there where the, the battery pack is serviceable. I mean, it's a great goal, uh, and we should work towards that goal. Yeah, so, I mean, if you've looked at, like, the, the teardowns of all the different Tesla battery pack and, um, and the Chevy battery packs um, on, like, Monroe Live's channel, you can see that they are, um, like, fused. In, they're, like, yeah, like infiltrated with some kind of foam adhesive thing that, like, turns it into a brick. Um, there, there's a couple of reasons that I think you can't um, service individual cells. One, you have to tab weld it. And um, if, the, if, the, if the welds, like the battery is put under a lot of vibration in a vehicle and with vibration you know if you lose electrical contacts and thermal contacts you can you it'll, it'll ruin the battery pack so basically they want to have really high quality welds and um, adhesion of the thermal uh, management system and then they just want to lock it in so it doesn't vibrate and so making um, individual cells serviceable probably isn't going to happen anytime soon unless they change completely the way the battery packs are made. Um, maybe the modules would be replaceable because you know the 40, uh, 400 mile Aptera has six modules. And my guess is you could replace modules. So that would be uh, somewhat better. But I think individual cells, uh, yeah, just like they said, it's not happening. Goal, but uh, at the moment we're, we're not uh, deviating too far from the mainstream norm on that. I think the battery pack is pretty much a a seal it and forget it unit. Yeah, it used to be that um, the early EVs, you could replace cells over time, but the reason you needed to replace cells over time was because the consistency of the cells wasn't that great um, and the quality for longevity wasn't that great, but uh, battery cells have changed a lot right. uh, in the last few years and the consistency and internal impedance and capacity um, is just, uh, just so much better now. Um, everybody's gone to basically um, pot the whole pack 
um, and basically it's a brick, uh, so you can't get in there to replace the cells. But. That's right. Yeah, I don't know which EVs you could replace early cells on. Maybe there were some small, like neighborhood EVs that you could replace individual cells on earlier. But I, like you know, the early Teslas, you couldn't, you really couldn't mess with the cells. And um, I had a Nissan Leaf that you definitely couldn't mess with the cells on that. Um, any of the mainstream EVs, you you couldn't you couldn't mess with the cells. That's right. It's good for thermal as well. Uh, I live in Colorado, which seems perfect for my Aptera, but the sun is extremely damaging. And I've seen what the sun can do to car wraps in just a few years. Um, granted, these examples are um, our, uh, our, our vehicles will be wrapped uh, from the factory. Uh, we're doing testing right now to assure that those wraps uh, can last you a, a very long time and, and have a useful life. Uh, we've, uh, we've seen examples of um, other uh, cars that come from the factory with wraps, uh, so they're getting more and more popular. Uh, but we expect, you know, our wraps to be not only versatile because you can change them out uh, very inexpensively, uh, but something that will, you know, serve you for, for uh, a good a good amount of time. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think at least five years is a kind of standard today, and yeah. I think we can we aim to do better than that. Yeah, I, uh, you know, my boat company, we wrap lots of boats, um, you know, a little different because they're sitting on a trailer and go uh, in water all the time. But really what happens to wraps is the edges get dirty and then the edges start to peel up. Um, so even in drastic circumstances, if the uh, wrap starts to peel up, you can kind of maintain those wraps. You can, you know, uh, clean the edges and press, you know, down where the edges are peeling and get them to last, you know, twice as long. Uh, but the, uh, the wraps nowadays are very, very cool. Self-healing, if you scratch them, you can go in, you know, with a, with a hair dryer heat gun or just wait for the sun to come out and they basically repair themselves. So uh, we think that the, uh, the wraps uh, add, add a huge advantage and we don't have to have a paint shop. We're not atomizing solvents. It's much better for the environment. Um, so. Always. Okay, so earlier on in the thing, uh, Chris mentioned vinyl wraps, which if you've been watching our channel, we've been talking about uh, paint protection films, cosmetic paint protection films, which are pigmented as well um, as an alternative to vinyl wraps. And I think vinyl wraps have become kind of like a, um, a, a name that's used to encompass all wraps, kind of like how uh, Kleenex is a company, but when the people say Kleenex, they just they just mean tissue. Um, uh, so he's talking about self-healing, and if you look at self-healing films, like see, this is self-healing vinyl wrap, but when you look at what it's made out of, it says material here is vinyl, but when you look at their description, it says material TPU. Um, and if you look at self-healing vinyl wrap, if you look through any of these links, most of these links say, they say vinyl, but they actually mean thermoplastic uh, TPU, which is polyurethane. And so polyurethane is paint protection film. And, and paint protection film um, is much thicker. It's much more UV resistant than vinyl wraps. And um, it, it, it lasts a lot longer. And plus, as Haptera said, most of the horizontal surfaces are going to be solar panels. So most of the surfaces that are going to be covered are going to be the sides, which take the least amount of solar damage. Um, so I think, uh, I'm hoping that uh, Chris is just using vinyl wraps as a generic term and that they are going to use paint protection film, which is a thermoplastic polyurethane, uh, which should last a lot longer and be better. Um, and especially on the, the vertical surfaces, uh, paint protection film, you know, you know, maybe could last 10 years, which would be great. These edge effects, isn't it? That's a electrical <laughs> engineering humor. Um, uh, okay, how will one. the inevitable devaluation of the U.S. dollar affect up terrorist procure? Okay, the... Um... Okay, I'm going to talk about that. That's a very interesting question, and I want to talk about that in a completely new video, uh, maybe next time. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I think it's interesting. The, the good news is, is you know, they are talking about sentry mode. They are um, considering it, although that's going to be not in the launch edition, probably. Really happy about them, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, and that looks like that's going to happen. And hopefully they're going to use paint protection films. And, um, and then, of course, the question about the cells. I, I don't think any EV is going to be in, have individually replaceable cells. And so um, Aptera is not going to be any different about that. Okay, but I want to talk about the dollar question. That's a very, very interesting question. Um, and we'll talk about that in a future video. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.